as, as you look at the model, you can see that the part on the trolley is sort of in the middle of it. It's not sat on the trolley like you'd expect in uh, real life. So all we're going to do is add a function, a VR function, uh, which will offset the position of our part when it's on the trolley. So we're using the wizard, so it's all we have to do is know the x, y and z offset amounts and plot, put them into the window and the wizard will create the code that we need. So now when we quick 3D the model, uh, we should we will see uh, the, the wrapping as soon as the parts come out of the wrapping machine it'll have been offset. So this should, this part here now you can see uh, it's sat on the trolley. The next thing we want to do is uh, we want to build some walls because we've got our 2D layout and our 2D process flow uh, in the 3D and the 2D world but now we want to sort of extrude some walls up so make it look a bit more realistic so the way to do walls is to basically draw, draw lines on the machine on the 2D world as you can see here just using the, the standard display tools and then we can tell witness to extrude these lines and make them into uh, 3D shapes. But first we're going to run it, redo the 3D without extruding the lines, just so you see what it looks like beforehand. So that's what it looks like now. So we're, we're now going to tell witness that we want to extrude our, all our lines on all, on all the levels and we're just picking a texture here so we can have a different texture uh, for, for our, we can pick one from, our, from the default library. So now as we quick 3D it, you can see our, we can see we've got our shapes now. So that's a lot more, a lot better view of the model now. So we're happy with our model. We've got a model that works. So that's really our demonstration of building a model. But now we need to actually get some information out of the model. So we're going to start with a pie chart. And all we're going to look at is a proportion of boxes to cartons uh, that are being shipped from the system. So how many are leaving? So again, so here we've brought open the dialog for the pie chart. And we're going to use the uh, insert with prompt uh, to, to automatically create the code for us again. So we're just going to find the code in the list of functions, select it, right mouse click on it, insert with prompt and select the part from the, uh, the tree menu just by double clicking that we want to count the number of parts of or number shipped in this case. And we'll do exactly the same for the uh, the other part. When you set a, a time interval, so how often the pie chart actually updates and reevaluates, which we're setting here. And now, as we run the model, well, first we'll put some display. So we'll have a look at. Do we need to draw the key? So it'll tell us which each segment, what each segment means, and we can change the display colour of that, draw that on. But in addition we may actually want to know the physical number as well, so how many have been shipped. So we can add to this key and either select a percentage or a number. So now as we run the model you can see the pie chart changing and the number shipped uh, going up as we go along. From this, we also, instead of just looking at the proportion split, we're interested in how that changes over time. So what we're going to do next is draw a time series. 
So we've got we've, here we're just using another window uh, within Witness. So it's just another view on the whole area. So we can have it a different size, a different part of the area. It makes organizing uh, your display a lot easier. So like the pie chart, we set an interval time and we decide what we're going to plot on our graph every uh, 10 time units. So for this case, we're going to use number shipped again, but it could be utilization, it could be anything we want, or we could create our own variables, our own counts that we want to plot here. So using nshipped, we're doing insert with prompt again. And the third plot, we're going to just look at the, com the combined number of both of them. So we're just going to copy and paste the two bits of tech, two bits of code from plot one and plot two and add them together within this dialog. And just to make the dis we have to change the display of this because it's only plots up to a height of 10, so a count of 10 parts shipped, which in this case isn't enough. So we'll, we'll change that scale so it's, so it's more representative from, for the results we're going to get. So now as we run the model, you can see a graph growing sort of every time the time series updates. That was a quick and easy way, a quick and easy way to show how to build a model, what to display, and really what you get out of it. This is sort of an additional part to Witness. It's a Witness Presentation Manager. It's it's another way of displaying results. It sort of produces you a dashboard that you can use uh, just to sort of collate all your results. And the bonus of this, it also allows you to, it also updates this when the, when Witness is running in batch mode, uh, because in batch mode you don't see the, the actual display, but this presentation manager actually does update as you go along. So here all we're doing is creating the same pie chart. We're actually going to use the pie chart we've made to uh, update the, web, the presentation manager. So as you've seen there, we put a pie chart on the screen, we gave it a name, an alias, and then we put the same alias into the pie chart within sort of the normal 2D witness. So we've created all that, we've created our links, saved the file, so we're now we're closing it in the designer, so the, the bit that you make the dashboard, and now we're going to open the viewer. So it's it's actually an external file. So you can you could use the same file for several different models, as long as you have the aliases match up so they're the same. So here you can see as we run the model, although it's different orientation, the pie chart is basically is showing the same information. To finish off, we're just going to show you another feature within uh, Quick 3D. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to actually move the get the witness to move the camera as we go. So we've zoomed in to a point within our 3D world, and now what we're going to do is select the trolley and tell the camera to watch it. So basically, follow it. So following it by Stay, camera stays where it is, but it's going to follow the movement of the, the uh, trolley. So we see it, so we're just tracking it as it goes around the system.